who would I want to like ride for? I couldn't think of anything. And I was just like getting more depressed and more depressed. And this, this 27 thing was like heavy oh, yeah, on my yeah. mind. And I'm like, dude, like, is this a sign that I'm going to fucking die or something? Like nothing's working out. Maybe I had my, my hurrah. Like I just did my best album and now mm -hmm. it's just like time to go type of shit. So I started getting like deep into like depression and I was like, what the, like, didn't know. And you didn't really reach out. Instagram and shit. Talk about yeah, and Instagram wasn't around. Yeah. Like you couldn't really reach out. Like, and if right. you said you were going to therapy back then, people were like you fucking cool. Like what? Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, very not talked about the stigma. The stigma. Yeah, yeah. that's and it's just it. Like, yeah, what? Like what? Are you, like, Nowadays is fun. Now it's like f good yeah, for you. I mean, like, therapy, going, great. Fucking. I want to go to therapy. I've never even done it before. Yeah, I want to try it. And I mean, you pretty much do it right here. Yeah, I think this is. Well, <laughs> you, the, the person sitting in that <laughs> seat is always people's problems. Yeah, yeah, I'm the therapist. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I was going like falling heavy into depression, and no mm. one knew it. I didn't open up to it, and it gets kind of dark. I think, like I said with the BA thing, I think I should say it because there are yeah. people suffering from shit. But to me, pills and, oh, fuck, dude. Like, it was like suicidal, mm. but not suicidal. Self-destructive. Self-sabotage. Yeah. That's what it was. Mm. I was on a self-sabotage where I'm like, I'm not going to take a bunch of drugs and OD because then the stigma would be like, oh, he just, he was, he was a junkie. He died from partying too hard. Right. Didn't want that. Then it was like, I fucking hate guns. I'm... I don't even want to speak like, you know what you do with a gun if you're yeah. depressed. I didn't, didn't want to go out that way because that leaves too many people with, we could have done something. Is it my fault? Like, you know what I mean? So I was like, really think like, oh, wow. it was dark. I was thinking about all these ways and I'm like, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm not going to do it that way. And then I just like, and I was like, so I really want to end it. Dude, I, I was like on a self-sabotaging, like I'm lost. I don't know what I'm going to do. Whoa. Fucking. So then I was like, I'm just, to me, I was like, I'm, I'm going to stop eating. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I won't eat. And I sometimes I go like two days without eating. And I'm what? like, I feel like shit. But your body has to eat. I'm like, fuck, dude, I'm starving. Like, yeah, that didn't yeah. work, you fucking idiot. Like, think of another way. And then as I was eating, I was like, fuck, man. And that, that sick mentality I was in, I was just like, fuck, if you have to eat to live, like, if it's keeping me alive, if I eat, then I'll just purge after. Like, I'll throw up after I eat. Mm. And I'll just rid myself and... I won't have any nutrients and I'll just, then it's nobody's fault. You're I'm just going to wither away. Wither away. Nobody's fault. They saw it coming. They, they'll be able to see the, the, the periods of like, damn, like some, right, what's up. But, right, right. And then I got to a point where it was like, all right, it got bad where even when I was starting to drink something, it became like OCD. And then it was like suicidal OCD, like self-sabotage like right. how am i gonna end it like and i kept doing it and doing it and then it got to the point where i couldn't keep water down and then it was like getting real and i was like all right and then so, and that's back when you didn't tell anybody anything yeah and i didn't really hide it from anybody so well everybody thought you were on drugs everybody everyone, thought you were on like heroin, heroin and heroin yeah. and shit and it and for me to even fight the battle i would have lost because i would have been like i'm doing it because of this and i was like nope I had a note ready, like explain, like Jeez. it was, I was really? deep into it. Like, yeah, it was bad. And it, and I started to get thinner and thinner. And, but as, as that, it didn't like happen overnight. Nothing happens like that overnight. It was like when I discovered like, dude, all right, just fucking puke up after I eat and then I won't have it. And then I'll skate and I'll fucking, and it wasn't about weight. I didn't care what like, it's cause some people are like bulimic because they want to like, they think they're fat or something. Yeah. And mine was like, I just don't want to fucking live anymore, dude. Whoa. Like, I don't want to put anything on my body. Like, when is it going to end? 27's coming up. It's supposed to, it's supposed to fucking happen. So I'm doing all this fucking shit. And people knew I was like throwing up after I eat. Oh. And they kind of like joke. It was joking about it. Okay. Like, maybe they were scared to bring it up. Like, it's, it's tough to see someone do that. Right, so right. I don't know if they just thought it was normal or like whatever. They thought it was bulimic for whatever reasons they thought. Huh. So that was like the picture painted if you saw from the, like oh he eats and throws up it's bulimic but i was just like trying to end it wow and it got to the point where i was getting skinnier and skinnier i detached myself from anybody like i would start fights with my friends so they didn't want to be around me so i could just be alone and 
fucking get away from me. The more I'm away from him, like the happy you are. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Like you don't have to deal with me type of just the, the less of a relationship I had with people, the easier it was going to be for them to be like, Oh damn, he passed away. Right. You know what I mean? So you were already separating yourself exactly. from the people that you loved that yeah. loved you that were around it's, you. It's like uh, when a dog knows it's going to die and it goes, goes, it goes in the corner. Goes off in the, yeah. I was doing that. Wow. But in, in my mind, I didn't know. You I was did, like, right. it was all a plan. It was all a fucking Crazy. plan. And I had not let anyone know. And everyone thought it was the eating ish, the eating disorder, the bulimia. And I was like, I'm not telling anybody because it's it's going to happen. What brought you out of this vicious cycle? What was the turning point? The well it keeps going it kept going in and out and in and Waves, out. So ups and downs. So I pushed a gutters. lot of people away. I already pushed my skateboard family away. Nobody okay. wanted I started fights, I said shit, like I already detached. Then I felt like fell in love with this girl, like she saw like me going through shit, like Kind of like nurture. And I was mm-hmm. like, dude, someone, all right, someone loves me. Sh- yeah. Should I give it a go? And I think I'd turned 27 by okay. then. I'm like, was it supposed to? I was just so mentally wow. fucked for thinking that way so long. It's I was crazy. Just, so we got married and then the depression kicked back in and the old cycles of I'm not going to fucking eat, like I'm not going to take pills or do, I'm going to go back to my, it was easy just to fall in that habit. Like I'm just not going to eat or if I do, I'm going to fucking binge and pur- or like purge. I'm going to purge everything in my body. Wow. And then it got to the relationship with her. And she, uh, if she even watches, she's, I've never admitted this, but it started that self-sabotage where we were married and I should have opened up to somebody about like, I'm going through some shit. Like I'm having all these thoughts. You like, kept it inside. Kept even it when bottled you were married. it up. Yeah. Like back then you didn't talk, you didn't talk about, about that it. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You didn't, you didn't like, you wouldn't even talk about that to like your parents. Right. And mind you, Oh, and another big part, this is why I slipped back in. So my dad had passed away and my mom was sick for a long time and she was on hospice. So I, from not seeing what happened to my dad to physically seeing my mom wither away and right. she was in hospice and watched her die. Mm. That's when I was like, fucking now all I have is now I was like, I'm not afraid to die. Like, Got mom and dad, right? Married, whatever. Cause she, my mom had been to the wedding and stuff, so she seen me happy and all that stuff. And then she started getting sick, oh. and then I started getting sick, right? And then it was just like, fuck, like, should have talked to somebody, yeah. And then I talked to somebody once vaguely because we, me, and I was sabotaging our our marriage so much because mm. I just didn't want her to be with. Someone that died on her hand, it'd be her yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? If I died on under her if, watch. Yeah. If if I die married to someone, why didn't your wife do so? I didn't want that on her. Yeah. So we went like I was like, I want a divorce. Fuck this. And oh, and this this is fuck, I'm skipping. Being in that blackout stage, we had a son together. Mm. So and this was not me having a son to be like, this is gonna make me happy. Mm. I was genuinely like my mom had passed and I was like finding my moments like, okay, just, and before like the sickness really kicked in. And I was like, I was like, I think, I was like, I think I'm ready for a baby. Like, give me something to fucking live for. You know right, what I mean? Yeah. And we decided, and she was like, yeah. And so we were like both in our mind, like we're going to have a baby. And I'm like, we did sure enough. And I get a baby fucking boy. First try. <laughs> I was on cloud nine. Yeah. And I'm then, happy. and then fucking Sir Dolly is his name. Sir Dolly. Sir Dolly. Sir Dolly. Love that. Go ahead. So we had him. Everything was good. And I felt myself slipping. Like, f- I should have talked to somebody. Slipping. Falling into all those patterns again. Wow. And I had pride with him for like two years. Because she went back to school. She was a school teacher. Mm. And I was a stay-at-home dad. Loving it. And then he went to, I think he was going to like uh, pre-K or something i don't know like where he had to go to school or something okay yeah preschool and the, kindergarten yeah, yeah and the more time i had like alone i was like oh wow all i get to listen to is myself when i'm alone like fuck so fall into that pattern so just a to you, get to the point you guys it, split yeah i sabotaged it really fucking bad and I knew it when we went to a, a divorce counselor mm-hmm. and she kind of knew my fucking, my backstory. And she's like, do you, like, you look like you're going to die. And in my mind, I was like, oh, it's fucking working. I'm like, it's working, dude. Like, all right, cool. And I didn't say anything. 
And I was like, all right, like ready. Like at any point, I have a son, dude. I was not, I should have opened up. Yeah. And all, like, all of that aside, just all the relationships, I was alone again, like just going through it. And just, it was that wave for a while. And then I'd get the whims and I moved out to California and I was like, I'm going to buck up. And doing that is highly, I don't, if, fuck, dude. And reaching out to people so hard. Cause it if is. it's your friend and they're yeah. close, they don't know what to say or they kind of joke about it. They're like, oh, you got this. Like if you have anxiety or something like, no, you got this. Like just cheer up. Like that's the worst thing to say to someone when they're it's like, tough, yeah. so, but for me, it was like cutting off my finger and putting a bandaid on it and it's all good. Right. So I went to California. I'm just going to go redeem my relationships with everybody. Like I was just, you're not fixing any problems. No. And it was just trying to break the habits and wanting to do good in my mind. But when, when your body goes like that, your brain goes like that yeah, too. Like you, you don't wither all crazy. Yeah, and you, shit. you wither away like brain, body, everything. Just spirit, everything. soul, everything. So I moved to California for a little bit with um, my friend Barboa and he knew he's like, dude, you're fucking sad. Like what's going on? Come. And he was like the first dude. And he's like, I fucking got you. Took, took me where I like the best case scenario. He's like, I fucking got you. He's like, it's, he's like, you didn't get this way overnight. He's like, we're not going to fix it overnight. Right. 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 He's like, you got, he's like, you got to fight through this shit. And he was giving me everything I needed to hear. So I'm like, fuck dude. Okay, cool. He got me in good spirits. I was kind of like going, I was still like really recluse and I wasn't skating. And I was like, didn't know, like my body, I couldn't How skate. could you? Yeah. Dude, I was fragile. I right. might as well have been on heroin or something like I was bones, dude. Like it was, I think I was like 96 pounds at my lowest or some Damn. shit. Do you think he saved your life? Yeah. And it's fucked up because I stayed with him and I started to feel good. And then I went out to Arizona to visit my sister for the holidays because he was going to go visit his family. So mm. there's not, not going to be anyone at the house. And I'm like, I'm not staying alone. I can't be alone. Yeah, sure. So I was like, I'll go to Arizona for, I was supposed to go out for Thanksgiving or Christmas, one of the, one of the holidays. So I'm out there feeling good, like re-energizing, being around family, communicating, not really opening up to my sister, but kind of like letting her know. And then fucking Melcher calls me and he's like, dude, Barbo is gone. I was like, what do you mean? And oh, I got to keep it short. So I don't want to fucking cry, but. He, he got hit by a car oh my God. and like, he was DJing or something and he came out of the bar, some drunk driver hit, jumped up on the curb and smacked him, killed him like Jeez. on impact. So he didn't suffer. Right. And I lost my fucking mind. I was wow. like, Oh my God, dude. My sister kind of saw it and she's like, you, you can't, you can't leave. So she was like, you cannot, she was like, you're not leaving yeah, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to fucking like, I was like, Warpath, I probably would have done something stupid. Like, uh, I don't care about like how I wanted to go out. Like, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just losing my mind, dude. Wow. And stayed in Arizona for a while, and just kept thinking about Eric. Didn't I didn't go to the fucking funeral? I was like, no mm. fucking way. There's gonna be all our friends there. I don't right, want to right, see right. any of. The, I already fucking half of them hate me. I ruined relationships. Yeah. So now I was like really alone with the thought of Barboa, the guy that was trying to fucking help me. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, from Doing that whole, like having like the accomplishment in my mind, like I'm not afraid to die. I was like, it's time to like f fucking buck up and not be scared to live. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking try and get back on track. So stayed in Arizona for a little bit and it started, the more I started opening up, I would tell my sister, tell my brother, I'm like, look, it looks like I'm super depressed because everyone thought it was like bulimia, like right, straight up. Right, it looked right. like it, but. I wanted to die. And I finally clicked. I'm like, dude, my mom died. I know how that felt. My dad died. I know how that felt. Barboa, that just hit me right in the... If I have to do that to anyone around me, whether or not I do it on my own, I'm going to leave some people with this fucking... Yeah. It fucking switched feeling, something. Yeah. So Barboa did save my life and it took his. Wow. Like, And it's fucked up. Like, you don't know what you... Like, tell your friends you fucking yeah. love them. And he's one of those dudes, thank God, like... We had that relationship. Fucking sure. Love you. Hugs. Didn't matter. So it was 
it was that weird thing when Melcher called me and Melcher being my other best friend, yeah, yeah. telling the dude in the worst position, the worst fucking news flipped it crazy, switched it around. And I was like, Oh fuck. And then, then you start getting clarity and I was like, I got a fucking son. Yeah. And then I'm like, Oh fuck. I fucked up all this shit. His mom, we're not on good terms. And I was like, I got to fix it. Right. I got to start fucking living, dude. Like it's going to get real fucking tough. And it, for as much as the shit I was focusing on die, like dying, yeah. like I was getting the hard truth of what living was about, dude. Like it's not easy. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to fucking suck it up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking power through it. And slowly, it didn't like, I'm like at this point, I'm not like cured overnight. Like he didn't like get hit by the car. I'm like, oh, I'm magic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It was it's just a, like something hit me. Like right. I got to fucking change, dude. Yeah. Like that feeling sucks. I don't want anyone else to feel that way about me. Like, huh. and that was him getting hit by a car. I couldn't imagine like someone seeing it happen and they know what's happening. Like with my case. And I'm like, something's got to change. Yeah. So I just started steadily trying to get back in like building relationships, baby stepping back into, I was staying with one sister and I was like, you know what? I think I should go. And I kind of went and stayed with another sister. She mm. was in Reno. So it was kind of scenic out there. I saw snow and shit. Like we got 11 of them. Yeah. So I, had, I had, yeah. Options. had so, options. So from there, like just start segueing and you know, I was still like sad and shit. Like it yeah, wasn't yeah, like yeah. I was happy. I was still like having There's thoughts. There's no or, switch. There's no, no on and off switch. And I was still like with the, the eating and throwing up and stuff. It was such a part of me. It was like hard to break that habit it's without a, physically having like paid therapy or something, you know, it's like, yeah, you have to take it on yourself. And like, I really struggled with it for a long time because I was so used to it and it became like an OCD right, where I had right. to do it. Like something bad was going to happen if I didn't do all this shit. And I, then I was like, well, something bad, something bad's already happening. If I do this, it was such a mind fuck. Crazy. And then slowly, but surely I was just like riding the wave, riding the wave. Oh shit. Like catching a bad wave. No, just go up. Just, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just going to keep doing it. And life's just going to keep doing it. And I've just been learning how to ride the fucking wave, like to this fucking point. It's like, true. And man, if anyone's like suffering, like for me, the, uh, the advice for as bad as it sounds, but me going through it, reaching out to someone like close to you mm -hmm. might not be, you should reach out to a stranger who's in the position to give you no bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you, you said I mean? before, um, sometimes your friends maybe don't know what to say. Exactly. They and, don't know what to say. And they're they can, not a professional. They're and, not versed in that type of discussion. Exactly. They don't know what somebody's going through. And even you know? them saying something they think is right might make it worse. Might be wrong. Yeah. 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 And so if anyone's going Listen, through Listen, reach shit, out yeah. to anybody. Any, but, but, but I, you're saying stranger where they have no judge. They don't know you can kickflip. Sure. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. Even if you're, they don't know you're elite basketball. I'm not talking about skateboarders. I'm talking about anyone yeah. watching this that might have a friend. Let them like reach out to a stranger. Right. And because they're, they don't care. They've heard it all before and they're going to fucking, it's going to help. Or a professional. There's that's a lot of numbers yeah. out yeah. there. You that's know, what it's like, what, what, what's a, you, you pick up a phone, yeah. you call, you talk to somebody, you don't know who you're talking yeah. to. Another, that They could save your life. That's exact. Like someone in the position to help. Yeah. Not, you're not a random stranger or stranger. No, no, I'm not right. saying yeah, someone yeah. on Or you might reach, reach out to the wrong stranger who's probably yeah. dealing with some deal, no, shit themselves and they might tell you the wrong information. Yeah, to me, I was saying stranger on the lines of that hotline. Sure. Yeah. That, yeah. Like someone right, in right, the right, right, right. Someone, a stranger in the position to help you. Yes. Like a, a someone that deals with that and that can help with somebody. Like right. reach out because the friend, like. You could have saved the, so much time and friendships and heartache if sure. you had just. If I would have took in my own, like I just reached out, but I had to learn from all this to talk yeah. about it now right. for other people to be like, dude, just fucking open up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a yeah. lot of it comes from that BA shit, dude. Right. I'm doing this now because what BA did for him and he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't I, do anything wrong. I didn't. Do, but in my mind, and I want people out there to know they're not doing any, if you have those thoughts, fucking Get them off your mind. Yeah. It's the easiest way to take them off your mind is to get them off your fucking mind. The, the hardest part, though, is the first step. The first step. Yeah. And, it's, and once you cross that first step, yep. it makes it a lot easier and then it keeps going. From yeah. Even with skating, you know, yeah. you, that, yeah. that first try. Yeah. You're going to get over your fears and, and you go, oh, I got this. Yeah. Exactly. And that was another thing that was hitting hard, too, is like I physically could not skate anymore. And that's that. And 
that was like, you, yeah. yep. And I was like, this is, and then when I wanted to get better, I was like, oh my God, like that accomplishment of like, I'm not scared of death. I was just like pumping myself like, all right, don't be afraid to live. Go through some rough shit. Right, like right, right. you didn't get this way overnight. You're not going to get better overnight and you just got to keep going. So it's been a fucking journey up and down, up and down. And I'm happy more than not. I'm, if I have something on my mind, I, I do it. I never let it get to the point where it was at and I won't let myself get there. You, you, you know, the, uh, the triggers maybe, yep. and that, 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 that yep. point you could stop it. And, and you always have to take the, the, if people say, just turn a, po- a negative into a positive. It's literally, when you are dealing with something like depression like that, mm-hmm. you have to take that literal and not just some slogan on a t-shirt. Like it's real. Someone oh, yeah. came up with that because maybe they're trying to help. And now it just looks like a corny t-shirt, but yeah. just, man, everyone's got fucking problems. Of course. Dude. And when you realize that it makes you feel not that it's cool that other have people have problems. It makes you feel like a human, like, dude, all right, I'm not alone. I got this guy struggling over here with like, he hates his job or every, everyone's issue to them could be at the same level. It was for me, like right, how right, right. devastating my issue is to me. You could have something I'm like, that's not a big deal. But to you, it's devastating. It's huge. Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. So people need to know that. Like yeah. everyone's going through shit. Yeah. And reach out, do whatever you have to do. But you have to, it does, like you have to, it's got to be in your mind that you're going to do it. Yeah. 100%. You cannot just. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what I, I was going it. through. Yeah. Like wow. that's why I took a step back from skateboarding. Mm-hmm. And I did some interviews and stuff and. Being on the show now, like, I don't have an image to sell. Yeah. I don't have a board to sell. I don't have to impress anybody. This is just talking to, dude, yeah. I, have, I have fucking mad love for you guys. Like, Hell, same. Straight up. Same, yeah. And Kelly over there, too. Hey, fucking, you're the man, I dude. feel bad for him being over there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes, oh, dude. Shit. This is how it works. No, thank you, bro. Dude, you're, dude. you're the man. Yeah, and that that's why I fell in love. So it was Barboa and skateboarding, yeah, even man. though I can, still... Still, I can't do the shit I used to be able to do, but I have that feeling, dude. Yeah. Dude, one of the most important things I think you just said was don't be afraid to live. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, like, like I, I've gone into dark places myself. Yeah. But hearing you just say that, like, I was just like, yeah, you're right. Like, don't be afraid. Just go live your fucking life. Yeah. We're and all, enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah. We, it's an inevi- inevitable that we are all going to pass. Yeah. Don't be afraid to live in the moments that we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking just do, do what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Go firecracker some shit. Yeah. Do have fun. Be wacky. Do be a human being. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Be show you. show love yeah. to people. Fucking yeah. hold the door open. Be a fucking human being. Exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't be ashamed yeah. of yeah. Like, like little things like that. And being know? a human being comes with emotion. Like right. It's happy, sad. If you were happy all the time, you wouldn't know what sad was. If you're sad all the time, yeah. you wouldn't know what happy yeah, is. Like, like you go through these experiences and learn from them. Yeah. If you didn't go to that rock bottom spot, you wouldn't be to where you are now. And I wouldn't cherish the shit I have yeah, now. Course. My exactly. son, even because yeah. he's a mama's boy and sh- mm-hmm. like now, like, and he's got the, like having a boy with him, like with, with his mom was no, no mistake. Right. And in his heart, he knows like he, when you feel like your parents made you as a baby and you weren't kind of like, Oh, Billy's a mistake or whatever, and have that stigma. He, we've never told him like you were on purpose. What he just knows that yeah, love, yeah. Right. and he has such love for his mom. Where that's even though I'm not around him, and I want to be the best dad, and even though I can't at this point right now, like providing wise and stuff, hmm. I don't let that eat me alive right. because I've never ever once heard him say you're a bad dad or just make me feel a certain way. Yeah. So as long as like the po- like negative into the positive. Sure, he's with his mom all the time, but you know what? She's the best mom he could ever have. Right, right. He's taken care of. He's not worried about where I'm at, where before it was questions and she had to make up shit when I was in my dark place. Yeah, yeah. It's and tough. now it's, there's a lot of shit that in my past I could have been like, that's the worst shit ever. Now I'm just like, you got to, Build your way back up, buddy. Yeah. You got to fucking fight your way back into this little boy's life. Like, right. Into any, if you want to be a part of skateboarding, like doing this show is very liberating for me because for the whole time that I was going through that, no one knew. And I didn't care because I didn't, I was at that 27 club yeah, mentality. Course, right. And I was like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, 
I'll leave them with a good story at the end of the day. Or like, I don't care. Yeah. But now that I love skateboarding so much and it means everything to me, like, fuck, it's such a cool circle to be with people that have the same love and same problems because everyone's got a problem. Oh yeah. my God. Everyone loves something and everyone has a problem. Find, find the middle ground. Like, it's so funny that we are all in this world together, like skate wise, but like skateboarding is a thing that kind of covers up the, the problems we have. Yeah. You know, and like, I think it's our escape. We like that. We have these problems and guess what we do with that? We go skate. Yeah. yeah. Of those yeah. Problems. And, yeah. Right yeah. <laughs> but that's a blessing and a curse too, yeah. because you're kind of just thinking you're taking it out on skateboarding when you're just bottling it up. Yeah. And just or suppressing, just suppressing it. it. Yeah. That's what, yeah. 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 So, and can we do like a fucking run a suicide hotline? Of or some course. Shit? Yeah. yeah. Like at the end, yeah, like yeah, give yeah, a number. I didn't think about no, that. Definitely. You mentioned it. Yeah. Like, cause everyone's had some dark thoughts. Oh, for sure. It We've gone have, through it in skateboarding yeah. as well. We've and lost some, you know, yeah. some and that's why I had amazing to bring it up. people. And I didn't even know Ben. And oh, yeah. that's when I was like, and I, that happened well after what I had already oh, thought sure. about. And I was like, yeah. good God, dude. Oh, I hope like you can't you can't think for him. It's just uh, like yeah, it is what it is. I don't want to know how he did it. What he right, did, right, he's right. at peace with himself. Right. We had a buddy in Vegas. It just literally five days ago. Oh wow, happiest dude ever. Crazy. I fucking hate Instagram, dude. He was the happiest person on Instagram. It's just that reaching out. Don't put on a fucking happy face, right. dude. Yeah, a lot of people dude. do, and they do, and yeah. and it's the social media that is. Uh, emojis and shit. It's tough. It's, yeah. It's, it's, if you're, if you're in a dark place or even having a bad day, run it on your story. Be like, dude, today sucks. I fucking did this. And then someone can DM like, dude, fuck, ha same shit happened. Try this. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have, have to no take idea. it, but you could see people reaching out to be like, oh, fuck. All right. You see the notification button. Like, oh shit. I resonated. I'm not alone, dude. Like, oh yeah. Fucking right. everyone's got problems. People think they're alone. Yeah. yeah. That's, and, that's a big thing. And you are, if yeah. you don't reach out. That's true. Straight up. Well, dude, thank you so much for sharing. Dude. Yeah. I, that's I amazing. Felt like, yeah. I felt like for as much as I love skateboarding, I had to be truthful with it. Sure. Just because if this does help anybody, one person, one person skateboarder or not, my son can, he's going to be 10 this month. If he, do, like digs in the ditches and wants to watch something old I did. Yeah. I want him to be proud. And if he has something that maybe triggers something like, Oh fuck. Mm -hmm. Like if dad, like I don't want to say like I carry the gene of it because I, he didn't deal with like the stuff that like seeing my mom and my dad, I think that resonated hard with me. Yeah. So I think like my coming around and I'm not like, cause I'm in Tucson now and his mom's in Vegas. And like I said, he's a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. And He's in good hands. So, yeah, yeah. And it's, I, I FaceTime with him. I try like Amazing. try and be like a good dad. I just want him to be proud of who I am. So that's what keeps me going. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Just find, find your rhythm and know there's going to be a fucking hiccup once right. in a while, but just you get through it. Get well, through I'm sure it. He's yeah. 10 years old and I'm sure he's proud. Oh dude, it's fucking highlight of yeah. everything. Like just, yeah. yeah. And you don't have to have a son. Like it's not like have a son and it's the cure all thing, but yeah. it, I took for granted, like, six years of his life being a fucking like in my own head. And then when I got out of it, like, like you want to get you, you now you want that six years back. back. You want that, but you can't get, you it, can't back, get it back. So I just, but you have to go, forward. you have to get it back yeah. by moving forward. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I can't stew on it. Cause then you just start thinking about shit. That's irrelevant. And it's like, be here now. Yeah. Six years ago or that, that time back then is not, you're wasting time now thinking about time you wasted then. Yeah. Then therefore you're just losing time. You're now, losing just, time. Right. It's a fucking evil process. Yeah, evil fucking yeah. cycle. Cycle. Yeah. Vicious cycle, dude. So yeah. Like I said, bro, thank you for sharing that because yeah. it's amazing. I, you it know? was, it's hard to talk about, I'm sure with, uh, you know, you, but you've, you know, you're in a different place. Yeah. Now. It's, and uh, it, that had been eating me alive for sure. so I'm long sure. just even me trying to get back in skateboarding people didn't know the real they thought it was like the eating issue or they thought it was the drugs and right thank you guys for having me to have the platform to just say it all on the line like and feel comfortable doing well, it bro. i didn't have to say this because yeah, yeah when we got here like i was nervous when i got here and then just steamrolling everything like mm -hmm. you guys are a good platform for for a that. lot yeah. of fucking good things yeah. like and well, like I was just, I mean, you went from a place 
not even wanting to tell anybody, anybody. a relative, nobody. nobody. My own wife. And now you're sitting here on a worldwide program for <laughs> skateboarders. <laughs> maybe and you're sitting here telling your story. It's, maybe I know it's incredible. It's meant to be. That's yeah. the story that it was all. Uh, maybe I went through all that bullshit for a reason to maybe impact Shaped someone else. Because oh, sure. and people get like for like what they like the bulimia stuff and mm-hmm. people see that when a guy has it there it's like a joke because i remember bam had it for a little bit Uh-oh. and he was ashamed of it i'm like dude it's a fucking sickness yeah yeah, like, yeah. yours may have not been in like triggered the same way mine was because i was doing it for my reasons mm-hmm. the reason itself is it's not good right and for people to be like oh that's a chick's disease and you're like sorry like disease, make yeah. me feel even worse. Yeah. Like throw yeah. some more fucking pressure on my back. Right, so, right, right. Oh, now I got this. You know. It, yeah. Yeah. It's it just holds such a stigma. And yeah. yeah. And yeah, you're the like this opening up and it's amazing. I love it, bro. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank for you. Fucking, thank you. No, yeah. Dude, thank you. It dude. needed. This is and awesome. It all came from. I didn't even know the BA piece. So yeah. everyone should thank BA. Brian Anderson. He got me to this point where I love that. Even if I. If that story didn't come out, I would just tell funny her like stories and shit right now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he He opened the doors. He opened the floodgates, man. Like yeah. now we got gay people op- skating in dresses and shit. It's I'm cr- wearing, yeah. You're like, oh, you're wearing I'm, dude, that sh- share strawberry? Fucking yeah, get it. Like yeah. in a skirt. And I'm like, oh, that's a dude? Fuck. That's even cooler. <laughs> yeah. like, if you're a skateboarder, you're with us. Yeah. Like yeah. you're with us.